So, uh, welcome to video problem uh, 13. Uh, the objective here is to use Ampere's law uh, to get the B field uh, for a uniform and steady uh, volume uh, current density located in free space. Here we can see the configuration of our uniform volume current. It's essentially a cylindrical wire of radius A, which is infinitely long, and it carries a uniform uh, volume current density, which is given by the expression here. It is located in uh, free space with free space permeability mu naught, and the objective here is to determine the B field at the observation point P, which can be located both inside and outside uh, the volume current. If we introduce these two uh, uh, coordinate systems, rectangular x, y, z, and circular uh, cylindrical r, uh, phi, z coordinate systems, the observation point will have uh, these coordinates, or alternatively, you can pick it up by this uh, position vector. Uh, the volume current density will be along the wire, uh, which is in the z-direction. We first postulate that for this uh, infinite uniform volume current uh, density, uh, the B-field uh, will only have a phi component, and the magnitude will only depend on this coordinate r, which is the radial distance. So let's try to argue for this. Because the wire, uh, which is our uh, volume current, is infinite along z direction, this implies uh, translational symmetry and thus independence of the B field on z coordinate. If you then imagine uh, these observation points here uh, on this uh, round path of our cylindrical surface S, uh, due to cylindrical symmetry, all of those points will essentially see the same current. And thus, uh, that would mean that the B field is independent of uh, phi coordinate. So the magnitude of the B field uh, really uh, is only a function of the radial distance uh, r uh, to the observation point. Now let's, uh, let's uh, move our attention to the direction of the B field and uh, assume, for instance, that we have an r component, which is the radial component of the B field. So if we have it at this position here, due to the cylindrical symmetry, then we would also have it here, we would also have it here, we would also have it here. Then obviously uh, what we see is that such an R component of the B field will give rise uh, to a flux of the B field through this uh, closed uh, cylindrical surface S. And that will be in conflict with this fundamental law. So obviously we must conclude that there cannot be any R component of the B field. Now let's look at uh, the Z component uh, and for instance uh, in that case consider this rectangular uh, path over here uh, and this path is bounding this gray surface and there is no current obviously flowing through that particular surface. That uh, surface and this path can also extend inside of our conductor and obviously the surface will not be crossed by any current. If you look at the second fundamental law, which is Ampere's law, which says that the circulation of the B field is equal to free space permeability times the total current flowing through the surface that is bounded by this path, the right hand side for this surface here is equal to zero. That means that the circulation of the B field along this path must be equal to zero. For that to be zero, uh, you would have to have same uh, Z component on this path and also then at a further distance uh, away uh, from the wire. Then you can extend the path to infinity and that would imply that the essentially your Z component is constant with the radial distance. This is not physical since we expect it to decay as you move further and further away from your current. And this means that we will have to abandon the existence of Z component also, so the field will only have a phi component, and this phi component will only be a function of the radial coordinate. That means that we can use Ampere's law, as given here, for instance applied on this uh, cylindrical path, uh, which can be both outside and inside to determine the B field. 
This is what we would like to do uh, on this slide, where we will figure out the details of the integration contour, the right DL element, and also the enclosed current. So we want the field uh, at a point inside of the wire and also at a point outside of the wire. This is the cross-sectional view of our wire. There is a current here uh, flowing in the Z direction. In order to get the field inside, you have to introduce this contour uh, inside that will have a certain radius R, uh, which will vary from zero to the radius of the wire. And then you will have to relate it to the total current flowing through the surface SI multiplied with free space permeability. And you would do something similar uh, for this uh, integration path outside. In video problem 11, we have uh, clarified what the appropriate DL element is. And for both the blue and the red integration contours, this will be the appropriate uh, DL element uh, to use. You can refer to video problem 11 for more details. Then uh, you would have to find uh, the total current flowing uh, through the surface SI, which is bounded by this path. And also uh, for the field outside, you would have to see or find what will be the total current flowing through this surface S0, which is bounded by the path C0. So the total current enclosed by this inner contour, that's the flux of your volume current density. And uh, this ds element is uh, a vector uh, differential surface area. So if you consider uh, this inner surface here, and that's a small uh, area that you can see here. And obviously uh, that area is the product of dr, which is a small increment in r direction. And then this arc length, which is equal to r d phi. So that will be the magnitude and it will be in the z direction. So you can use it uh, in this flux integral, which for the current enclosed by this contour will go in r from 0 to r and phi from 0 to 2 pi. This is the volume current density and this is our ds element. When you do the integration, you obviously get this result, which is nothing else than the area of uh, this uh, surface SI times the volume current density. You get this because the volume current density is uniform. To get the total current enclosed by C0, that is obviously the total current flowing in the conductor. So this integration will go from 0 to A. So you will have the result that you can see here, which is essentially the cross-sectional area of your wire times the constant volume current density. So now we have all the ingredients to get the B field. Uh, this is Ampere's law. This is the form of the B field for our configuration. This is the DL element. This is the current enclosed by CI, and this is the total current flowing in our, uh, in our conductor. We can plug the things uh, in the left-hand side. You will see uh, this uh, familiar result here, and you will relate it to the product of uh, free space permeability and these uh, two total currents. So the left-hand side uh, is easily seen to be 2 pi r times the B field. And uh, the right-hand side, we would like to express in terms of the total current in our uh, conductor, which is I0, and that is related to our volume current density by this expression here. So obviously, when we plug everything inside, you will get the B field inside our volume current density or our cylindrical wire of radius A to be given by this expression, and outside of it, we will have uh, this, uh, this field. We note that the field outside is actually the same as for an infinite thin wire, uh, which was the case we considered in video problem 11. So uh, we are done with the solution of this problem. Uh, you can see the field solutions here, and we would like you to verify if the boundary conditions for the H field uh, are satisfied at the surface of the wire. We would also like you to sketch the B field as a function of the radial distance R inside and outside the wire. And finally, verify the fundamental postulates on the differential form. Thank you very much for your attention.